All right. Hello, 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 everyone. Welcome back to another coffee break. Uh, we're in person. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Tell Chi, it's so different being like, oh, now when you make bad takes, I can like <laughs> get you now. Me, bad takes? Never. 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 No. Never. Never. <laughs> Never in your life. Yeah, so Brittany is here in New York. This is actually your last day. I know. It, it's kind of crazy how you start, like, oh, I got all the time in the world. And then you blink and you're like, oh, shit, I got to get on the plane tomorrow. Yeah, it's really crazy. But I hope you've had a good time. I've had an amazing time. Yeah. Very, very, very gracious, very kind. Oh, thank you. Thank Except you. for Lady. Oh, oh, Lady. My little dog here. Um, who has uh, been very temperamental with Brittany. So that's all she's fun. jealous because she she knows that Tia loves me more, oh. right? Right? She's like, <laughs> she's like, no. <laughs> Maybe it's the fact that the five cats, she's like, you know what? Four, four cats. No, me with five cats. Oh, yeah, she smells okay. all of them on me. She she's smells like, all of them on you. She's like, go away. You got cats. She's like, please, no more cats. I'm already outnumbered as it is. <laughs> your cats are literally bigger than your dog. Yeah, I know. But she's so cute. Look at her. She's adorable. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So we decided to do a coffee break in person. I'm super excited about this. Um, Let's just dive in. I think we want, so the whole purpose of Brittany's visit was to come for New York Comic Con this year. We didn't have- Secondary purpose. Aww. First purpose was to come and see you. Aww. 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 Cute. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, what you calls it. Yeah, so New York Comic Con went on this year. We didn't have one in 2020. Well, not an in-person one. So- I mean, how was it, Brittany, being back uh, was, in person? It was really good. I was kind of like, for me, Tia's like, oh, it's so much less busy. And I do fully agree with that because Arkansas Comic Con was even like slap packed, it felt like. Oh, wow. But um, I don't know. It was like, it was still so many people, but it was way less people. It was kind of like, um, instead of being like a sardine, you were like, a sardine with a couple of sardines taken out. You got some wiggle room. You got some wiggle room. You can shake the tin and still have some room. Yeah, I think anyone who's been to like New York Comic Con knows that normally when you're walking around, you are literally like squished next to people. There have been times where literally when you're especially doing like the crosswalk, where uh, it's um you're just like stopped and I'm sitting there going like why am I freaking stopped? And it's because literally no one else is moving. It's like gridlock. Yeah. You know? There was only one spot in that entire time where it was closer to the bathroom like normally the crosswalks weren't that bad especially for like new york comic-con standards yeah and there was one point close to the bathrooms where we sat down and you're like yeah this this looks real familiar yeah. it feels <laughs> like i i've seen this before yeah but i mean besides that it was great being there in person um it was nice seeing all the vendors there were still plenty of people in costumes um the biggest things that i noticed was that the funko pop Funko Pop wasn't there no. this year. Um, and there wasn't like a whole lot of like celebrities, but um, <laughs> <laughs> so Hayden Christensen was there. I know that. And Line, massive. Massive. A absolutely massive. Like just to cut into that point real quick. Yeah. Uh, we Because she's probably about to bring up David Harbour because we did get a photo up with David Harbour. He's amazing, beautiful man. Uh, but we'll get into the situation with that later of like exactly why that was a little odd. Yeah. We were an hour behind getting our photos actually taken with David Harbour because he, how do you pronounce it? Hayden Christensen? Yeah, Hayden Christensen. He, um, his line was so massive. It was completely backed up. Like you would think, oh, it's going on for a while. He's got it because it's been going on for an hour already. It's got to be getting close to the end. No, just a flood of people. Everyone with their lightsabers, everybody in their costumes. And you would hear people start cheering and clapping. And yeah. like they were causing a ruckus. They love that man. <laughs> yeah. So that was like cool. So we saw David Harbour um, and we who like was amazing yes. i have the pictures on uh online you can check it out on my twitter and my instagram yeah. i'll put it down below um so tall he's so tall so we're tall. so short so it was me Brittany, our friend kelly who is also a contributor to gvn and we're all relatively short and he's really yeah. tall but 
we were all sitting there going like, all right, how's this going to happen? You know, are we going to be wearing our masks the whole time? Are we going to have to social distance taking? Like, how do photo ops look in this post, um, like, covid era no. <laughs> it literally looks like we're photoshopped into the shop because they literally have a glass pane like separating yes. and it's kind of like now that i think about it, i'm like really what's the point of that and like don't even i would have been fine me personally if i was wearing my mask oh i would too like- and i will say that everyone was like really good at new york comic con wearing their mask but it's like you're still in the same space like sharing the same space it's not like the pain like was the whole entire room it literally was like this like you know i could have been like hey david know? however what's up bro yeah, yeah. Like, so like, 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 now, oh. now thinking about it, i'm like that really didn't make a whole lot of sense i guess just so that people wouldn't touch him but i would have been perfectly fine if they were like all right just don't like hug him or anything yeah like that was that. the thing is it's like him himself was great uh touchy i was a little sad because i was slightly disappointed because it does kind of feel like okay you know how some it and not to like dehumanize him himself but it felt very felt very like a zoo like oh yeah. there's the attraction behind a glass pane and you're like what's up and it feels like almost like it it kind of separates that uh that experience like the connectivity like you don't feel like they're actually real right there and right. and he just kind of smile or like it was like oh yeah blah, blah, blah. but it felt like very impersonal I guess that's the hard part but he himself was great yeah he himself was nice like he was smiling and I said I I put out a whole like thank you and he was like thank you and I was like ah but I uh like because he himself was great it's just like it was so much different when you think back to like when we got the picture with Tom O'Pinica and uh Richard Spite yeah and uh getting to like be so close they're like ah you know it'd be like and you like, felt like you could talk talk to him but it's kind of weird when you're talking to him with a glass in front of your face which kind of reminds me of college right and now I, and i feel like they especially wanted like people in and out really quick which i get it like things have always been like super like quick when it comes to photo ops because like we've done several for supernatural i had a few photo ops with uh john bernthal and it's like don't get me wrong i understand like the in and out like the quickness and everything um but it's like i get the hustle and bustle where it's like in and out in and out like i remember when i saw john bernthal it was like all right go ahead okay and which is fine like yeah. it's completely fine everything but you still feel like that like that you got to meet the celebrity yeah. whereas the david harbour it's like all right bye <laughs> like what do you mean i can't give you butterfly kisses oh god I, I, no know, nothing I mean? like that you know what i mean no i know we've literally talked yeah. about that where it's they like talked to it a million times like some people were smart about it. like they had more preparation because some people did like the link like where they hayden uh christensen and the person like both leaned into the glass yeah like, and i thought that like was really this. cool i i thought that um well that's how i realized that we were even going to be doing it with a glass pane in the middle because it's like um we were waiting online for so long and at some point like i'm just gonna be honest i really have to use the bathroom yeah, yeah. and i was like i can't wait right now you know we're on this line for a long time and i feel and we didn't know that um david harper's like photo op was running behind um we didn't realize that it was hayden christensen no. still doing it so at some point i like ran off the line to go use the little girl's room and i saw this guy like kind of walking as well and i looked at his photo and i saw it was like hayden christensen and mm-hmm. i was like oh so hayden's still going on yeah. right and he's like yeah and i was like oh that looks like a great photo he's like oh thanks so much and like i noticed the like yeah, thing like, and i was like i don't do it. I'm, I'm <laughs> editing this shit in photoshop because it does feel like it literally looks like two people like spliced together yeah that's my one thing is i don't want people to be like oh you didn't take a picture with david harbour yeah. it's literally edited and it's like no, no no there's literally a glass pane like literally in the middle oh man i said literally like three times in a row did you <laughs> literally say literally three times <laughs> oh it was such a good time though i it wanted to great. spend way too much money they literally had people there literally they had people there that could take like custom mold of your teeth but like give you like vampire fangs or do like the goblin teeth or like the little teepees where it's like and they're like yeah we have to take a dental mold we craft them right here you go home with them today but they had no more appointments left and i wanted it 
Aww. It would have been one hundred and twenty-five dollars well spent. <laughs> that's a lot. That but is a lot. I got a T-shirt that was really cute that had Loki on it from T Turtle. So make sure you check them out. They're awesome. Um, yeah, sponsor it. I, oh, sure. yeah. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of really great vendors um, that I saw. I mean, I was trying to be a little stingy with my money, obviously. But I could have probably Jeez. spent so much. The artist alley looked great. They had a really cool outside area with like a Doom Patrol tent. I saw someone cosplaying as Danny the Street, which was really cool. Um, oh, and you got something. Well, yeah, sure. I got my D and D book. <laughs> I need to get their card later because uh, they gave me a card for the uh, actually making the campaign. Which, funnily enough, <laughs> oh. oh. I yes, actually have that in there. Here's the David Harbour <laughs> picture. I don't know if you can see it. So yeah. as you can see, there's a line yeah. and it literally looks like, I but I in. swear it's not. <laughs> yes. I'm a, a Tia knows something on a D and D. Uh, like that's the whole reason I even wanted the custom things was so I could be like, yeah, I'm going to do my goblin cl- cosplay. And, um, and we got to meet up with a lot of really cool people, some familiar faces from the GVN family. And I'm going to name them off, right? Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so we met up with Pete from Pete's Basement. You'll recognize him from our shows Figure It Out and the Marvel Cinematic Review. Uh, Jamie from Swiper Art. I believe it's Swiper underscore Art. She's really big on Twitch. Um, she's also on, uh, the Marvel Cinematic Review, and I believe she does a show at Juwan called GVN Talk. Uh, you can obviously check that out on our YouTube channel right here. We also met up with JD, um, who's a very talented person. He, you can check out on GVN's Figure It Out. And we met up with Dan and Jen. I love Uh, (laughs) Dan, you will see from marvel cinematic review we've had him on our top 10 before and he's also a part of the main damey uh family of podcasts which have they call this a movie their review of both good and bad movies yeah. uh, uh yes they're stranger damey's podcast and then jen his uh dan's amazing wife is a Twitch streamer on Twitch. Duh. Yeah. A Twitch streamer on Twitch. Yeah, Twitch streamers. Game Vault podcast, uh, where I she, love them. Uh, they're amazing. They're so cool. I need so them cool. to adopt me. You think they'll adopt <laughs> me? Could I, be, could I be their uh, little like Jersey child? Like, not for nothing, just to like stand for a quick second. Yeah. Like, they're both so awesome and everything. Like, Jen, oh my God. Witches Jen is so, thing. she's so beautiful. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> But she's like a tall Amazonian like warrior queen. I, I loved love it. Her. Yeah. So please make sure that you check all of our friends out that we just mentioned. They're all so cool. Um, I was really happy to meet everyone in person because this I was, was too. like I've met Joan before, obviously in person, but I've never met Jamie, Pete, JD, Dan, Jen. So we need to get like, Kanan to come. Kanan is in um Kanan, Tennessee. If you're <laughs> in my eyes you come to the next new york conference i can meet you okay i we we like to tease uh kana as the uh silent assassin because he's never on screen or anything i never see like i'm kana i don't even know what you look like you don't know what kana looks, like? looks like for those who are wondering like who are they talking about because he doesn't show his face yes he's Kanan. like the left hand Kanan like literally runs everything he's the one who posts all of our articles he's our editor-in-chief I like to say our commander-in-chief because he's amazing so yeah just to let you know he's the guy who's running our site our twitter and everything so what up Kanan what up Kanan what up Kanan um but yeah New York Comic Con was like a whole lot of fun this year I'm just happy we got to go back I was happy everyone was wearing masks um super cool that we were able to get into the press entrance oh, i felt very cool about I, that. I felt very uh, i felt very premium as my husband would say like uh because normally with like not saying like oh press has got to have special treatment or anything with that but normally the way you get in even with a press badge you enter the same way everybody else does so crowded so long and you're just like oh my god i'm just ready to get in there and we asked for like okay you know we think there's a little bit different entrance this time literally no line we walked straight through the front door mm-hmm. walked in and i was like oh it was really nice great. and seamless i was very happy about that 
um what should we call it yeah so they had like a doom patrol uh tent they had a sandman audible um thing which our uh good friend our very talented writer michael cook actually did a review on the sandman audible series so you can check that out oh i would have liked to go through that like experience oh, i'm sorry it's okay no it was like so, that's the thing is like inside wasn't super crazy busy it was at least manageable but whenever you got outside where people were like, okay, I can kind of like get there. It was so crowded. Yeah, it was, it so was pretty crowded. crowded outside. It was really crowded outside, but. I'm sorry. I'm like situating. <laughs> T is like watching me situate because one, I'm short. Two, <laughs> my legs were falling oh, asleep. Oh shit, I just shook the camera. You, you shook it. I you shook, shook it, the camera. I am shook it, Tia. No, I'm really happy to have met everyone that we did to go back. I do wish that there were actual like so I'm just gonna be honest. I just didn't feel like there was any panels that were worth going to. Yeah. Um. And the ones that were there, they sold out so quick because you actually yeah. had to book ahead. Because normally it was first come first serve for the panels back in the day, mm -hmm. the pre-COVID world. Uh, and this time they booked ahead, and they're like, "Oh, if you're not here 30 minutes beforehand, you forfeit your seat." And I had one booked for David Harbor, but by the time she got to see it. It was sold out and i'm like i ain't gonna do this by myself and you didn't like, have to pay for that right no okay good. No, it was I, free i would have felt really bad <laughs> you feel bad never, nah, never nah. stress we, ne we don't know her we don't know stress but it was a lot of fun i'm looking forward to next year again um going and i'm glad kelly came uh so i really enjoyed kelly kelly if you're watching this too i really enjoyed meeting you make sure you check out she's doing a little kind of also roundup of new york comic-con she'll be putting in our pictures and everything mm -hmm. so that'll be on the website as well so make sure you check that out um so yeah new york comic-con was awesome what else did we do this weekend we we watched venom let the be, be carnage. carnage so yeah i didn't go to see venom when it first came out last week because i was like britney's coming in let's just go we're gonna see experience venom. it together and she hadn't seen the first venom so i made her watch it literally it was day. really good i know like, do you know i'm sorry to interrupt but you know that it got like so many bad reviews people yes. didn't like it i really liked the first venom i really enjoyed it like for one i know it's kind of become the thing to have these really long movies uh you know marvel has kind of kicked it off the three hour long movies the and normally at least two hours it was kind of refreshing to sit down for an hour and 25 minute movie because i think if i had watched an hour longer of it i would have been like yeah it's like, i'm kind of go there you go home like not in a bad way but it's kind of like it felt like even though it was, it was only that long an hour and 25 minutes I didn't feel rushed. I didn't feel like there was too much slapped in because normally they have so much filler. Like there's got to be this caring, emotional moment, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, no, Venom, Venom is gorgeous. I love, you know, and, and Carnage. And I will say that uh, Dom, our very, very talented writer, did a review, a written review of Venom, Let There Be Carnage. So please make sure that you're checking that out. I'll link that down below. But I really liked Venom, Let There Be Carnage. Um, I love the sort of odd couple relationship that Venom and Eddie had. <laughs> I can ship them. No, <laughs> I can ship them. Uh, they play yeah. so well off mm -hmm. of each other, kind of like the unwilling host slash uh, the symbiote that just really loves Earth now. And was like, you know what? This is worth protecting and wants to be a hero and kind of like, I make you special. But he's Venom's always so sensitive. He is who a sensitive is, boy, oh right? He's so sensitive. I noticed that. I was like, you a sensitive boy. But um, I remember online people were like, oh my God, there's a rave scene in it. That's so cringe. I kind of liked it. I liked it. I liked Oh Venom. yeah, spoiler, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, um, the Venom, like, the, I will say, out of character kind of for i know it's not made by in association with it's Marvel. association with there's not a random death like every yeah. time like then and i'll go ahead and spoil just this little part because it's in the first movie too the moment those like symbiotes cling on to someone that is not compatible even for like a hot second well i will say there's one person that survives so i shouldn't quite say that a lot of people died trying to hold the symbiotes and well, a lot of people died from carnage which i guess is fair well it's to be, carnage i mean to be fair like when the first venom came out people were really pissed that it wasn't rated r yeah. you know people wanted to be like worse but I, I thought it was good i thought let there be carnage was really good 
Uh, Andy Serkis, I think, did a great job directing it. Such a good voice for Carnage, too. Yeah, Andy Serkis voiced Carnage. We were talking how we really enjoyed Carnage voice. Like, Carnage was really awesome. Yes, Cletus was awesome, too, in the always scary uh, serial killer way. And Shriek was awesome, too. But uh, it's kind of like, we're always going to focus on the symbiotes. I mean, they're the whole point of the freaking movie. And you would think, like, Carnage... Carnage had a good personality. She is giving me that look. I, 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 I sent for the symbiote. It's I, fine. I thought Woody Harrelson did a really great job as uh, Cletus Cassidy. I think that there was no better person to play that character than him. I love the whole relationship that he had with Eddie. Um, you and I went back and forth on the Shriek thing. I quite liked um cletus and shriek's relationship just because i don't know i kind of like it's kind of like the joker and harley quinn but yeah. like they're both willing participants so it's yeah. like this like i love i don't know because i was telling Brittany it reminded me very much of natural born killers which woody harrelson was also mm-hmm. in so i think that's why i liked it yeah. it's kind of like i didn't have a problem with the relationship i think you know i've done soul searching on it because i'm like what exactly makes me feel off about it but I think what it is, is that it's, I'm going to chalk it up to good acting because do you ever have two people make you feel so uncomfortable, not their relationship, but the fact that you have two people that are so alike and so mindlessly want to kill and don't care about doing it. It makes me feel so uneasy. And that's kind of like with the natural born killers. It's like those like two people having the sick glee of it. Like, cause you'll get serial killers. Like there was a, like this uh, girlfriend boyfriend duo that killed the girl's like parents and then they bragged on a video about it and it made me feel so sick because they were so gleefully like oh ha 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 look we murdered and just that disassociation and but I do think uh, well I was just associated to a movie not real life <laughs> no I'm just saying how creepy uneasy it makes me feel yeah. it makes me have like a visceral reaction where I'm like I don't like this. I don't like two like <laughs> killers just, being together. I just love so the actress who plays Shriek is Naomi Harris, and yeah. I just loved her whole like like I love that scene when they're they're breaking her out and they're in the car and Carnage has like the car kind of levitated yeah. and she's just like yeah baby like that childhood glee to <laughs> yeah. it yes. But I already knew it wasn't gonna work out because it's like as we know the symbiotes don't like sound, sound and shriek's whole power is like sound did she it kind of reminds you like of uh like black canary from the dc universe yes. isn't that her whole thing she yes has- i like because that's the thing is like there's been a couple of scream oriented characters mm-hmm. throughout you know all comics because yeah. like, there's like banshee shriek uh black canary i'm trying to think of anyone else but i always thought it was such a cool power and i always like when we were writing a lot i was like oh i want to make a character who can scream like that and i would look back and i was like there's so many characters (laughs) with this power but i want it no i love it i just i don't know i loved it i didn't mind that venom let there be carnage was short no. um love the whole relationship with eddie and venom (laughs) i thought that Dude, that scene when like Cletus like escapes prison with Carnage is like there's Carnage. Yeah. <laughs> like and that's another thing is I told Tia, like Carnage is so scary in himself. He uh because you know you have Venom and you had Riot from the first movie. Right. Where you felt like, okay, they're like they're more of like a like a buff sort. Like they're very yeah. like, oh, I'm strong, and it's like a very like two unstoppable forces like going at each other carnage is thinner like more like uh he's just scary like he's more like the screams he does i don't know if it was just the theater we were in but when he screamed it made it like rattled my brain i was like oh my god i was like he's scary i felt like this is dangerous you know like i felt like because you know when you watch the first venom and venom going up against riot i really don't feel as if they're that unmatched like yeah Raya can make like blades with his hands yeah but i really don't i didn't really feel like they were unmatched but i really felt like venom was unmatched against um carnage carnage, carnage was like an <laughs> increased uh, mega version the freaking I, I will tell you the scene that i love and it's from the trailer yeah is when cletus turns into carnage 
and, and Venom retracts and he's like, oh yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, he's a red one. And yeah. Eddie's like, I will let you eat everyone. Every- <laughs> I still want to know exactly what the red means for symbiotes because like, I know like when I try to Google, everybody's like, well, he knows this and this and this. I'm like, no, he literally said, it's oh, the that's red a one. red one. So it just Ugh. makes me see it like that. I guess, I mean, red is a very, like, violent color, so yeah. maybe, like, that, but, yeah, it was, like, holy shit, I I really liked Venom, Let There Be Carnage, honestly, I yeah. thought it was really good. Um, they kind of opened up for two, um, like, without being, like, spoiler, they opened up for two additional movies, or at least, like, between the end credits plus the possible involvement of a new symbiote which you would assume because but they do it very like you're like oh they got more stuff they can do because they have two loose ends they need to tie up oh yeah so really quick a complaint i saw was someone was first of all like in i'm not the biggest like comic book knowledgeable yeah. person or anything but i know that in the comics like carnage is a huge character Um, And he's, like, the main adversary, pretty much, of, like, Venom. And people are like, oh, the first Venom, Venom went up against a symbiote. And then the second Venom, Venom goes up against a symbiote. This is so boring. And it's like, it's Venom. It's Venom. Of course he's going to go against symbiotes. And, like, how could you have Venom and not, like you know touch upon carnage you know yeah i like that they did touch upon the fact that uh with the introduction of shriek it's like we do have that they do have mutants in this universe yeah Uh, because that was one thing i sort of go they didn't say oh she's enhanced they went oh her mutation is increasing like the fact they they even said mutation which they never said in remember in like i know now disney owns you know the fox characters remember when age of ultron came out you know like technically scarlet witch and quicksilver are mutant but in age of ultron they called them enhanced yeah and or the fact and they never said mutations they just said like gifts or powers or something yeah because like uh uh, with even with that's the whole reason with scarlet witch and quicksilver they couldn't say that their dad was magneto was because of all the rights issues Right, so I don't know. It's like it's venom. Of course, you're gonna have him go up, up against symbiotes. All right, but I will say definitely stay for that end credit scene because that was yeah, exciting. Yeah. I don't want to spoil that, but that was exciting. That was like, yeah, this opens up for possibly. You have to have a sequel. You just have to. You have to. I I'm excited for more. Like I did tell you, I was very impressed with the fact of like carnage in its own Mm -hmm. because sometimes they would make it like oh it's a mindless killing machine and so therefore it's not going to talk to him or you know really have a thought press it's just like like a brainless creature and to see carnage actually have a personality carnage had a huge personality i was very impressed by that yeah like the because because riot didn't really have a personality he, he was just more like I gotta go get with the rest of my people, you know, we're vibing, we're going on a rocket ship, <laughs> we're going on a trip, you know, blah, 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 and murder, 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 but there murder, was, murder, 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 but besides that, there really wasn't a whole lot to, yeah. but there was a lot to Carnage, which I'm glad that they did that right, because again, if you're gonna have Carnage in a live action film, you might as well do him correctly, yeah. you know? And one thing, it's like a uh, slight spoiler, just because like in the state, with Venom, there's a lot of times I'm like, how is he eating? Because they make a point to say he feeds off this certain chemical or component that's only found in brains and chocolate. Right. And so he's eating so much chocolate because, you know, Eddie's not eat, letting him eat brains. Or I think he eats like chicken brains. I yeah, think chicken one. brains too. And like, uh, which, yeah, they're a separate part with that. But uh, the fact that he does bite people's heads off a little too often it well, not too too often but the fact that you don't ever expect it truly when he's fighting a bad guy you're like oh there's no way he's gonna eat his head and then but i think that like true comic book fans would be appreciative of that because oh, I it's loved like because it. it's like you know the reason why they didn't make it r is clearly sony wanted to to yeah. have kids go see it as well you know like um i think and i'm you know i'm just saying this is a whole reason why people were saying that maybe birds of prey didn't do as well because they made r when in rea- and i watched birds of prey in reality you could have made that pg-13 and get kids to come in but by making it r you don't get the kids yeah. right 
So that's why they make Venom PG-13. But in the comics, he is this violent person that teeters sometimes on being a villain and then sometimes being an anti-hero, kind of like the Punisher. So it's like, you have to see him bite off some heads. Their their one F-bomb was very nice. That that F-bomb was great. (laughs) That one F-word per PG-13 movie. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's a good use of the F-bomb. That was a good one. I liked it. I liked it. I appreciated it. Mm. That's like, um, whatchamacallit, it? that's like in the uh, Netflix Marvel shows, right? Yeah. Those, and like TV is rated differently yeah. than movies, but I think it was rated where it's like, they can only say one F-bomb. And it's like, I loved seeing um, the moments that they decide to use the F-bomb. Yeah. Like Wait, in, what like in the a- the Punisher? What do they use it for? I mean, I forget now at this point, but I was going to say in Daredevil season two, of course, it was Frank Castle who, who dropped that's the F-bomb. Like, that's yeah, what yeah. I was wondering. I was like, who said it? And what it was, it was Frank Castle. <laughs> well, what context did he say? I'm trying to remember. I know he said it, but I'm trying to remember what he said. It. I really think it's um on the rooftop when he has Daredevil all chained up and everything. And when he's probably like F that. Like. Yeah, something like that. It's been a while since I've gone back and watched those shows because I'm so hey, heartbroken so still. She's I'm just still so, so depressed. So when we were there, um, I don't know if you noticed when we were d- watching Venom Let There Be Carnage, they showed the trailer to Spider-Man No Way Home. And it's really funny. I don't know if you remember the scene in the trailer where like Spider-Man's like clearly in a jail precinct being yeah. interrogated. So there's someone who like slams down a stack of papers, but you can't see him from like here up. And everyone like please, the inter- please let me No, hear. but I- okay, so this is the thing the internet like was like it's charlie cox it's charlie cox look it's its yeah. arms but then someone said they went to a theater where like the ratio the the, the screen is like taller yeah. and it's like some rando dude you know and everything uh, like that <laughs> also to you like the one thing that caught me off guard about the uh, spider-man trailer was that i didn't catch the first and i've seen the trailer a couple times because i always see it for doc Ock. uh but he says, uh, oh, what's his name? Oh, the other character with the uh, Doctor Strange. Wong. Wong. He says, um, because last time I catch you, he's like, don't do that spell. Right. Is what I thought he said. Like, don't, don't perform that spell. Something like that. But this time he says, don't test that spell, which tells me, did he create this and why it screwed up so bad and why he's a little more distracted? Because I really don't think all these time I've been like, there's no way it's Doctor Strange. There's no way Doctor Strange because he's being a little too like carefree. But if he really felt like the world was great, he's fixed everything. And he's mm-hmm. like, mm, I just want to play with this spell. But then again, it that one scene with the trains makes mm-hmm. me think they're fighting. That's what a lot of people think that they're fighting. Like some people are believing that that's not really Doctor Strange. That's like a dark version of Doctor Strange. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't have, I feel like I don't have the comic book knowledge to like yeah. really... Um, guess about that but I still think it's exciting because oh man Venom let the recards I don't want to spoil it but I I will say that um, Spider-Man No Way Home is really exciting because I think it's going to open up a lot and I think if Kevin Feige the president of Marvel Studios does decide to bring back the Netflix Marvel characters there's no better way to do it than like, I don't know if they're going to show up in Spider-Man No Way Home, right? Because it's already a pretty jam-packed movie. Yeah. But you can use that as, like, how you bring them in. I you know what I'm all, saying? I want all Spider-Man villains to show up. And I want to see... And Wilson Fisk... I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Wilson, Wilson Wilson Fisk is originally a Spider-Man is villain. Is he going to be there? Oh, please. There's no confirmation. There's oh, no confirmation. I do you know, want it so bad. You know, the Punisher started as a Spider-Man villain. His first issue is fighting Spider-Man. Who's first? The Punisher. Yeah, well, that's the reason why in the, the Spider-Gwen, like Spider-Gwen is considered a multiverse, right? Right. Mm-hmm. That her, uh, the detective that's constantly trying to catch her is Frank Castle. That's who's constantly trying to catch her. Well, that's her. what I'm saying. So it's like, okay, if you're going to bring all these Spider-Man villains in, right? Like, yeah. obviously it's confirmed that Alfred Molina is Doc Ock. 
you saw from that little pumpkin so excited. you saw from that little like ball that rolled in that's that's the green goblin yeah. ball but so, which one is it gonna be i mean like, has it been confirmed that's willem defoe but we can cross our fingers so please. you got that jamie fox has already been confirmed that he's coming back I as electro fox. remember he was electro in the second yes. amazing spider-man so he's already been confirmed yeah. right uh but- what about um oh, what's his name he played like the condor oh he was in the the first spider-man the with tom holland yeah no. Um, he Michael Keaton's character yes, Vulture. Yes, Vulture. I said Condor. <laughs> Close enough. So I don't know. I don't think he's going to be in Spider-Man: no, no Way Home. But you know what he is going to be in? What? So Sony, you know how they have Venom. Yeah. Um, they're coming out with this movie called Mor- Morbius, with Jared Leto in it. Yes. And that's going to be connected to the whole Venom universe. Huh. And in the trailer, Michael Keaton shows up as Vulture. Clearly kind of showing that there's already those, like, weaves of the whole so thing. So did Disney fully buy Fox already? Well, those are Sony characters. Okay. But they're doing, like, an agreement, Disney and Sony, you know? Like, kind of like, all right, we see that there's an advantage to letting, you know, borrow and everything. What are we going to do if, like, this is for the hard part. It's like, I don't like Disney owning everything because it does become a monopoly. Right. And it kind of like, oh, you're kind of stuck where you want kind of that competition. But it's hard for me as like a big Marvel fan that I want them to own everything because I'm like, oh, at least every Marvel property, because you've seen how well they've done with the assets that they have. I don't think. And you want to see in the comics, they all interact with each other. You want to see them interact. DC doesn't have that problem. Warner Brothers has mm-hmm. every DC character, so they can play with any, everyone. I'm trying to think if I've ever been disappointed with a Marvel movie, like being Thor made by Disney. World. Okay, never mind. No, <laughs> never mind. Thank you. I was like, oh, maybe like uh, Captain Marvel, like slightly, because I've rewatched it since then. I like it better the second time. Um, but like Ant Man, Doctor Strange, all. Uh, okay, Doctor Strange was a little hard at first. See, can I tell you, Paulie and I went to go see Doctor Strange in the theaters, right? And yeah. we were bored to death. <laughs> it's better we the really... second time. It's kind of like you like it better when you know the character. Yes, more. because you're kind of like, okay, he's not such a dick bag. Well, I was going to say, so we really didn't like the first Doctor Strange movie, right? Yeah. And I remember when Infinity War was coming out, we had heard like scoops that the movie was going to focus heavily on Thanos, Thor and dr strange and i'm being like oh god dr strange you know yeah. and then watch infinity war love dr strange and paulie and i decided to then sorry we're drinking beer so yeah. <laughs> went back and watched dr strange loved it paulie and i laughed at sarah we yeah. loved it and we were like Maybe we just weren't in the right headspace, Sometimes or maybe you it's have better. Like a so- warm up because there has been like trying to think like with Iron Man, it kind of gave you a work up for introducing Black Widow, mm-hmm. and yeah. Avengers kind of gave you a work up for um, Captain America more. Like, but, but he had his first movie. He had first. his first movie first, but I just think Doctor Strange for me was one of those things where I had to watch it a second time, and now like I love the character. I'm looking forward to doctor strange uh in the multiverse of madness but i'm really excited about did you ever see shang chi no i still haven't seen it because when you saw it it was a screener yeah but it's been in theaters yeah well i also think though i think it is coming to disney plus at the end of this month okay so then you could just watch it there yeah because you definitely should it sets up a lot and everything so i definitely suggest that um eternals is coming out november 5th so I'm super pumped about that. I'm trying to think of anything else I've been super excited for. Probably the Eternals. Um, I, my brain is so much like video game news. Because um, I'm excited about the new Mario Party that's coming out. But I want to play with Dan and Jen on, uh, on uh, Twitch. I'm very excited for the GTA Remaster Trilogy. They're remastered. Oh, yes, I forgot. They're remastering GTA 3 gta san andreas and gta vice city so I, and it's going to be available for, available for the ps4 oh, and i don't have god. the ps5 yet and so I was like, thank god because mm-hmm. like i'm gonna say that's the hard part is they've kind of put themselves in a pickle 
because they can't really make everything fully push to a PS5 right now because no one can get a hold of a PS5. I know. I mean, the only reason I got a PS5 was I pre-ordered it on a, like, ex- not accidentally. I drove by and I went, how many pre-orders do they have? Uh, it was like eight. And I was like, counting the people. I was like, yeah, there's room. Okay. I'm going to go. <laughs> and I sat there for two hours on oh a whim. Oh, my God. But, yeah, so that... um. Uh, but we already did something where we talked about Squid Game. Yes. Um, which Brittany actually just watched on this it vacation. It was so good. So good. Oh, the front man's looking good though. <laughs> I, I, don't even judge me. Like whenever, like uh, I'm trying to think of it spoiler or not, but like just that you do finally see his face, and oh my god, he looks like he looks so good. Yeah, he I mean so they. Good like so many of the actors and actresses on this sh- that show are like uh, uh, <laughs> Shifts keys. Shifts keys. I also showed you the many saints of Newark but as of things that I'm looking forward to um still watching foundation which is on Apple TV plus with Lee she Pace. She loves herself some Lee Pace. I love me some Lee Pace. So that's fantastic and I'm I also got the first six episodes of the season three of Narcos Mexico. The season She's comes, so special. The season comes out on Netflix on November 5th. I haven't watched them yet, so I can't even give spoilers, which yeah. I wouldn't. I yeah. wouldn't. She'll the embargo be- isn't until, yeah. you know, but I'm just saying I haven't even watched it to even say anything, but I am pumped about that. But um, yeah. Uh, I lost my train of thought for a second. Go ahead, Brittany. Take, take anything, it off. <laughs> I'm trying to think of anything I'm excited for. Um, man, I'm trying to think. All I can think literally is just about video games coming out because, uh, like, Man of Madon, uh, there's the, like, dark, I think it's called, like, Dark Anthology or something like that. There's Man of Madon. It's basically the series of, like, you play with someone else, it's choose your own adventure to figure out what you're doing. Mm-hmm. And every Halloween, they come out with a new one. And so there's oh. a new one coming out. And I'm really excited for it because they each kind of have a theme. Like, one was like Salem Witch Trials, even though it wasn't in Salem. Yeah. There is um, one was like on an abandoned uh, ship or like on a not pirate ship, but kind of like an old oil tanker. And this one. It's like ancient Egyptian, basically. Like, oh. like, and you almost feel like it's going to go into... Uh, the only thing with those games is it's never anything truly supernatural. Yeah. It's always something like, oh, there's a brain-eating parasite. Or there is, oh, this chemical that's been yeah. fucking up your brain. Or, oh, it's through the eyes of like someone that's having like a mental episode mm. it's always interesting my foot fell asleep uh, that's why I'm that standing happens, weird. <laughs> that happens to me all the time but um yeah so near comic-con was great it was amazing uh please make sure that you look out for our coverage in a form of a written article if it's done by the time this video posts up i will link that down below please follow all of the friends that we just mentioned and everything <laughs> if you watch squid game please let me know as well if you watch Watch the many saints of newark foundation venom let there be carnage please let us know Brittany. let everyone know where they can find you at you can always find me on twitch at itty bitty brit um uh, probably going back to playing scary games it's about to be my stream anniversary and what about gta 5 i'm never finishing i hate the game no i'm just joking i'm just joking i'm gonna finish it i love it I actually really do love GTA. I'm going to try to make like a long stream out of it, but it is the spooky season. So I got to start adding uh, in the scary sure. games. Um, also been working on my YouTube channel. That will be Itty Bitty Brit. If you, I'm going to say that's the easy one. Or uh, follow me on Twitter at Itty Bitty Brit Zero just to keep up with ridiculousness. Also, I have TikTok, but I'm trying to remember if it was under Itty Bitty Brit, Brittany, or something like that. You'll find me. It's great. I'll post it down below. I'll Thank find me. it. I'll oh, post you're so it down good below. To me. I oh know, no, she's so I good know. to me. I'm really excited that we well, I'm happy that we got to do this in person. I know, everything. I love you. I'm so excited. Uh, it's a feels nice. It's very different when it's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you like time so well, you're like, man, it's like it's so much different. I'm just happy. I'm happy too. Um, for all those who are watching, I have a challenge for you. I don't know why I just thought about it. It's so random and everything. (laughs) You know me, no matter what, my mind 
is still on American Gods. Uh-huh. So let's hashtag hashtag Save American Gods. Oh my god! I want to do yes. that as a challenge and everything. So make sure you do that. But no, seriously, make sure again. Make sure you follow everyone. Um, since we've been talking about Venom, let there be carnage. I'm going to link Dom's review down below. So please make sure that you check that out. As for me, please make sure that you are following me on Twitter and Instagram, TC underscore Stark. And as always, please make sure that you are checking out Geek Vibes Nation. If you're not subscribed to this YouTube channel, please do. Uh, We are taking a break from uh, Marvel just because we finished What If? Yeah. Um, And we are waiting for... Please make sure that you are checking out this YouTube channel. We're taking a break from the MCR. We just did... Uh, we just finished up the review of What If. We will be back to review The Eternals. Unfortunately, we'll be back to review Hawkeye, but you know how that goes and everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. No, I mean, um, Florence Pugh is going to be in it as Yelena. So, of course, I'm excited. Okay, we're good with that one. Um, but yeah, please make. Oh, lady, you want to say hi? You want to say, <laughs> say bye? This is, this is oh, a disaster. Bye, lady. <laughs> bye, lady. Bye. Why does she always look terrified? <laughs> I swear <laughs> everything's good. Um, but yes, thank you everyone. And this is an in-person no. coffee talk. And I guess next, next week time, we'll be on Zoom and again. Next time we'll have uh 20 something hours between us. Exactly. Exactly. Bye guys. Bye guys. <laughs> Sad bye.